Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me here today as we get to talk about one of my favorite subjects, comic books. My name is Jose, I love comic books, I love talking about them, I love sharing them with you. Feel free to follow me on social media if you would like. Links are in the description below, I've also posted a link to the Marvel fan site that I have plots and offices and character bios for this issue. X-Men Annual 6 from 1982. Now, I made a mistake... I try to do these videos in reading order. However, when I was looking, they said the reading order of this was actually right after the X-Men got with the brood, uh, got back with the brood. However, it is not. This is actually from 1982. This actually takes place right before the X-Men uh, go to the brood. So when I put it in the playlist, it will be in the right order. But if you're watching these videos as they come out, it is unfortunately in the wrong order. But it'll be placed in the right order if you're watching this on the playlist. Speaking of playlists, I have two separate playlists at the moment, but I will have more. Playlist number one is the X-Men. I have Chris Claremont's run, uh, starting with Giant Size X-Men. Yes, I know that he did not write Giant Size X-Men number one, uh, which I covered as classic X-Men. I actually did the classic X-Men until all of the supplemental stories were done uh, during the Dark Phoenix saga. And then um, I also have a New Mutants playlist. Um, so... Yeah, so here we go. This is a continuation to the uh, Bill Sienkiewicz uh, story with uh, Dracula. I believe it was X-Men 1, 6... Oh, my goodness gracious. I was 159. So, um, here we go. We got the Bard College, which is where Chris Claremont went to school. And so Chris Claremont loves to give us uh, a lot of details and stuff. But we have a Rachel Van Helsing, world-renowned anthropologist. And she is giving a... Um, she's uh, teaching a class or she is um, there just part-time. But um, she's here with the... Um, with the students here. So this student says, Professor, considering your name and background, is there any connection between you and the stuff Bram Stoker wrote about? He says, Philip, I'm surprised at you. Stoker's Dracula was a novel, a work of fiction. Class dismissed. I'll see you Thursday. What a jerk, Phil. Um, how could you ask anything so dumb? So... And so she says she only told him half truth. The book was fantasy, but the characters were real. And his family has hunted Dracula for generations, but that task now is ended. The Lord of Vampires is dead, and I am finally free. Good evening, Rachel. What? Enter freely and of your own will. And so here we have a Dracula. And so um, we have the credits here. Chris Claremont, writer. Bill Sienkiewicz, penciler. And Bob Wyacek is the inker. Tom Orzakowski and Glynis Wayne do letters and colors with Louise Simonson Jones at this time as the editor. And uh, so Dracula has come to visit uh, Rachel. And then here we have Kitty Pride here. She is having a bit of a fit because she has received a letter. Um, unfortunately, her parents um, are getting a divorce, even though they promised they wouldn't here. And uh, Cyclops coming in from hearing that commotion here. Um, she's like, they lied, they lied. Storm says she's not being fair. And Kitty, look at this. Um, why should I? They're not being fair to me. They don't care ab at all about me. Or they wouldn't be doing this. They're just thinking about themselves. And Cyclops is asking Nightcrawler what it's about. And he's letting them know it's about the parents here. Um, and Storm says, they did their best, Kitty. They tried. They said so in their letter. This must be painful for them, too. 
And look at her. Why are you taking their sides? I thought you were my friend. I sh and Storm says, I am. We are all your friends. If I mattered to them, really mattered, they wouldn't have had the decency to tell me in person here. So this part here is a photocopy of this part. Uh, Bill Sienkiewicz is most likely experimenting and uh, did a Xerox, so didn't draw this panel here. And you can see uh, Storm here trying to calm her down, and Kitty's like, shut up, you're not my mother. She faces right through her and slams her door. And she's like, why, Mom? Why, Dad? Was it me, something I did? Would it have made a difference if I'd been home? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to like it here so much. Sure, I have been happy with the X-Men, but I've been happier with you. And then she, you can see her throwing the frame away. Being an X-Men is just about the most important thing in my life, but I'd have given up in a minute if I'd... Uh, I'd give it up now for you, for us, but you never even gave me a chance. So... I hate you both. I hate you. And you can see the color holds. Um, just amazing here. Just, um, oh my goodness gracious. You can see the inks are being recolored and just kind of put in. Oh, just beautiful here. And so Kitty is lays down on the bed just still. Um... And so I'm going to read this part because there's exposition kind of being given to us. And so for this moment, uh, she does. With all fire and passion, young heart, she has been hurt. Uh, her world irreparably shattered and she wants to hurt back. She's about to get her wish. A notice amidst the shadows uh, splayed throughout the room by the setting sun. One moves, draws uh, close to Kitty, then disappears. Kitty does not react as her sobs fade to silence and her head drops on onto her pillow, rage giving way to exhaustion, giving way to sleep. To her, nothing has happened, but something has. So you can see here using screen tone for that shadow, which is gone. So I just sort of wanted to read that. But then at midnight here, she gets up here. So she gets up. She feels rotten for the things she said to Storm. Um, said at least her parents are alive. Uh, Storm's parents were killed when she was young. She's starting to cry again, even though she's uh, been through stuff as X-Men. And so she gets down to try to uh, pick up that uh, picture she threw. She's glad only the frame is broken, that the picture's okay. And she thinks maybe she should go talk to Storm. And suddenly hear Kitten. And she's like, Ororo, how great timing. I was just thinking of you. And as as I, Kitten, was thinking of you. Are you okay? You look kind of funny. And then she picks her up. Hey, Lego, what are you doing? And you can see the fangs. I hunger, little one. And again, screen tones being used here. I would have liked to have seen how Sienkiewicz does this. And suddenly we see... Storm taking a bite of Kitty. Kitty's like, no. And then after she's done, she tosses Kitty out aside. Yes. And walks off the room and leaving a dead looking Kitty. And then look at the toys. Gosh, Sienkiewicz is so awesome. Just, oh, that that's a good detail here. Um, God, this is so good. And so, one by one, uh, you can see here biting Colossus and Wolverine and Cyclops and Nightcrawler. So, it says here, she does not hesitate as she claims her lives. Mercy, you see, is a human trait. And Storm and her humanity have this night parted company. And so she goes to her attic one more time um, and then leaves. Look at this. Transforms into this creature and off she goes and now has gone to her master Dracula and the two kiss. 
And suddenly, no, goddess, no. And she's like, I am myself once again. It was a dream. It was not Kitty. She lives. She is untouched, unharmed. Bright lady be praised. So poor little thing. She cried herself to sleep. And so it seems that this was all a dream. But suddenly you can see Kitty sort of waking up. Um, that was no ordinary dream. I have been summoned by Dracula. I will obey because he threatened those lives and souls of those I love. So she turns in and puts on her costume. Storm is so cool. Evidently, when he pledged his, uh, when he pledged to release his vampiric hold on me, he lied. He will regret that. So, off she goes, and um, here Kitty says she answers the call at last. The final game is afoot. I cannot act alone, yet I dare not involve all the X Men. Fortunately, I know the perfect choice for my uh, companion. Hey, Peter, what you doing? A history thesis for Professor Xavier is due next week upon his return from Muir Isle. It is a fascinating subject, Katya. Your American view of the world. And so Kitty kind of grabs him and makes some moves on him. And Peter's like, "What's that's not funny. I know what happened today was a terrible shock. And she says, hush, look into my eyes. What happened today is unimportant. Kitty, no, please. All that matters is tonight. Ah, as he screams. So what is happening? We don't know. So um, chapter two. So this is kind of broken up into uh, three chapters here. So, all right. So Storm's gone 3,000 miles. Um, and she reaches this um, castle in England, I believe. That's where... Cornwall I believe is and so Storm was led there and she uses her power to smash through that door could have just opened it but hey she calls out for Dracula and she's like I'm here vampire show yourself welcome Mororo and he says who and it is Van Helsing and she's like I'm Dracula's consort he will join us directly you made excellent time we did not expect you quite so soon Fortunately, all is arranged. You must be tired and famished. After your journey, a table has been laid, a room prepared for you. Please refresh yourself. Uh, and Storm's like, I am worrying that food looks delicious, but I'll show no weakness before the Lord of Evil or his lady. Your pride does you credit, Wind Rider, as does your carriage. He knew my thoughts. Goddess, the, uh, is the monster a telepath? And Dracula says, your deity cannot help you, Ororo. We have shared blood. You are mine. So, you relinquished your power over me when last we met. Circumstances were different then. Why am I here? Why did you break your word? Because I had no choice. Your tongue is insolent, woman. You who re need reminding who is master of your soul. No, you, vampire, need a lesson in humility, says Storm. And Dragula says, ha, your fate was sealed the instant I tasted your blood. True, I let you live out your days in peace, knowing that you would rise from the grave to join me as one of the undead. Liar, look into your heart, Ororo. And she's like, my neck. You cannot deny the truth. And she sees blood. Yours, uh, sorry, your Sorry, again. Um, your will, your body, your soul, Wind Rider, are mine. That's a good uh, Claremont trope here. And Dracula continues. You fight like a warrior born with one such as you by my side. The world is ours for the taking. But this was no easy struggle for either of us. We are both drained. And before tomorrow's dawn, we will need all our strength and more. Feed her, Rachel. I shall s see to my own needs. No, none must die because of me, Dracula. And Rachel Van Helsing says, You waste your breath. You cannot stop him. And Storm is like, Her grip holds me like a vice. I feel so weak. I cannot focus my concentration sufficiently to command the elements. I must bide my time, wait for the proper moment, and when it comes, strike without mercy. So. 
And so Storm says, he called you Rachel. He says, and she says, I am Rachel Van Helsing. I, th I know of the name, but I thought you and he were sworn enemies. And she says, and so we were when I was alive. And you can see the fangs here. And um, she's also now a uh, vampire, just like Dracula. So she tells uh, Storm that she needs her. And when this task is complete, you will be free to go. And Storm thinks here until the next time, until I am reborn as a vampire. Since I, too, have no choice, I will help you. But with two provisions, no one will be harmed, and there must be nothing to link this affair with the X-Men. And Dracula says, agreed. What is it you want from me? And Dracula says... Uh, there exists a book which contains a mystic spell for the obliteration of vampires. I wish you to steal it. And so um, she goes to the town here. And I like this very James Bond. Uh, um, I do not understand, Dracula. Why not break into the castle and seize the book yourself? And Dracula says, because that fortress is built atop one of the holiest spots in Britain. A storehouse of eldritch energy that rivals Stonehenge. To come this close is uncomfortable. Any near and we would be in agony. Ingenious, who chose this location? Rachel, of course, um, for that and other things. She has paid the price and she kind of shoves storms. Time and my patience grow short, woman. Be about your business. So, very uh, macho. And so... And so Storm goes, um, the hill is its own defense against the undead, but Rachel took no chances. She knew Dracula would acquire human living servants to do his bidding, like me. So the castle is more uh, is further protected by a sophisticated security system. Even Rachel doesn't know all of the components, another safeguard, in case Dracula ever got a hold of her. So um, she doesn't want to trip in any of the monitor sensors. And suddenly behind her is, um, oh my gosh, what would you call it? Uh, not a bow and arrow. Um, what are those things called that where you shoot them? Anyway, crossbow. And so she shot with them. And it says here, her reaction is automatic, instantaneous. A lightning bolt to stun her assailant. And um, she falls here. I've triggered the alarm. I lost my balance. I'm falling. Who attacked me? I was expecting trouble. Why did I not hear anything? And she goes, Kitty. And Kitty says, I'm sorry, Storm. You serve him now. I can't afford to let you lit. And then, woof. She means it. She was trying to kill me. Has this child gone mad? A gust of wind sends Kitty sprawling. So Colossus busts through and goes, Katya, if you have harmed her wind witch, I will tear you limb from limb. And Storm goes, Colossus, not you too. Have I gone mad? What is happening? Why are you doing this? And Colossus says, Kitty commands it. And Storm says, Many have threatened me, but I am still here, alive and whole. So she uses her power here to basically create ice underneath um, Colossus, making him slip and using the humidity kind of in circles here, kind of creating ice surrounding um, Colossus. And she thinks here, that should hold him for a while. Now to complete on the balcony. Kitty, she yells as Kitty's over here. I have the Montessi formula. Before this night is done, Dracula, beloved sire, you will be dust, says Kitty. And she continues here. This is a private quarrel, Ododo. Stay clear of it. And Storm says, you are not Kitty. You wear her shape, but you are not her. And you can see she's got her powers. How do you know? After all, you ran right to Dracula's arm the moment he called out without hesitation or a real fight. You can't deny the attraction of evil. Perhaps I'm simply following your example. I'd love to stay and chat, Ododo. But I've got lots to do. Toodles. Kitty, wait, goddess. And you can see here she's being shot here. And so um, these are guards. 
So she decides to um, bust out. And so um, she goes, my winds, I'm losing control. I'm too weak. My, sh uh, my shirt, sudden with blood, can barely stay conscious, much less maintain concentration. So tired. Perhaps this is a better way. No. And you can see she's grabbed. You will not so easily cheat me of my price, Ododo. If you cannot serve me further in life, you shall you then you shall do so in death as the police arrive down there. And so we get to the last chapter here. And we're in a bazaar in central Egypt. And uh Storm can't believe that she's back. Now, I don't think people dressed like this even in the early 80s um but hey let's go with it here and uh uh my gown my scarf they are dracula's so real as this seems it must be an illusion but is he the cause or am i doing this to myself and why to what purpose does madness need a reason and so someone calls out to her she goes no it cannot be. There you are, naughty girl. And she goes, mother. So this is an illusion. So she's probably remembering her childhood. Did you hear me calling? I've been hunting all through the bazaar for you, young lady. I am not in the best of tempers. And she's like, I'm sorry. So, and then, of course, here is her father as well. So, um, Nadare, Ororo, have a good time at the bazaar. Bring me any presents, he says. And then suddenly, we're going to get um, her origin again as her father, who was a photographer, and an airplane crashes and kills them. And of course, uh, this is where it begins her fear of uh, claustrophobia as she calls out for her mother. And suddenly, Dracula is there to rescue her. You cried out, what ails you, Wind Rider? And she's like Dracula, and then she closes her eye, and then we've got this. So, pretty cool. I was in a coffin, and uh, she goes, It's night, but the same night. How long have I been unconscious? I was badly wounded, yet I feel fine. No pain, only slight weakness and hunger. What has Dracula done to me? Your pardon, Ororo. When I chose your resting place, I forgot you, your fear of enclosed spaces. And she kind of bites... And she goes, no fangs. I'm still alive. Still human, she says. Your injuries have been tended to, Dracula says. You lost considerable blood, but fortunately I was able to put much of it to excellent use. And so she um, jumps toward him. Parasite, will I never be free of you? And he smacks her. No. So... And Dracula says, the wound was mortal, Ororo. I could have let you die. And she says, is, this, is that supposed to be a kindness? You have made my life as false as the illusion you used, you used to summon me. Nothing I do matters, because in the end, unless I destroy myself utterly, I'll become like you. And so, um... And so Rachel Van Helsing says, there are worse fates. And Storm says, then becoming a living denial of everything you held dear. And Rachel says, you do not understand. He offers rapture and power beyond comprehension. Yes, I see how happy he has made you, Rachel. He offers nothing I desire. And Dracula says, that will change. The child kitty has the Montesi formula. I must destroy her before she does me. To do that, I need every advantage, the strength of your mutant blood, plus the irresistible might of you by my side. And Dracula continues, as a vampire. And she says, no, you'll not harm her through me, yells Storm. And Dracula says, oh yes, Aurora, I shall. Wrong, vampire! And he says, who dares? But uh, when you see this, Zerk! And R yells Dracula. The X-Men bub, and we look after our own, says Wolverine. Storm, are you okay, says Cyclops. 
Save your concerns for yourselves, dogs, says Dracula as he grabs the spear and tosses it at Cyclops. During the few seconds left in your pitiful existence. Wolverine! I never heard of Cyclops yelling for Wolverine's help, but he does. Takes out his claws and uh, stops the spear, which Nightcrawler catches and shoves it into Dracula and then teleports himself out. Fear not, my lord, I will save you, says Rachel Van Helsing. And Rachel yells, your intrusion will cost you, dear mutants. First your lives, then your immortal souls, as she takes the spear out and lunges herself to the X-Men. But Cyclops kind of flips her over. And you, you can tell by just kind of these movements here. But she kind of turns into uh, fog because she's a vampire now. And she says, your strength is nothing compared to mine, little man. You cannot harm me. I do not believe it, says Cyclops. She transformed into mist. See how easily the tables are turned. And she knocks him down. I could crush you to a pulp or rip the living heart from your breast. You are doomed, human, and in these last moments left uh, left to you, you will learn, as I did, the true meaning of terror. I do like uh, the blackness and then the um, just her teeth there. And so Kitty fades, uh, phases with uh, Colossus. There he is. He will not escape us, Katya, and no power on earth will keep us from him. Aha, the cast is finally complete. The child is somehow different, he says. And uh, Dracula thinks here. There is a uh, blood lust in her eyes. She seems older, crueler, much akin to myself. Mare bravado, vampire, says Kitty. I possess the one weapon against which you have no defense, and I mean to use it. As he, uh, she faces through as he throws the... Um, Oh, not sarcophagus. The, oh, whatever. And Colossus destroys it here. And here, um, oh, I almost thought it was Wolfsbane. Um, oh, my God, I am so sorry. <laughs> Rachel um, is in a wolf form here. She's becoming solid, transforming into a wolf. Wrong move, lady. That makes you vulnerable to my optic blast as he blasts her through. And Dracula's kind of escaping here. There's too much confusion here. Too many foes. I will shift our battleground to the catacombs. Far beneath the house where I can eliminate the others one by one at my leisure. Kitty Pride is the most dangerous. She will be the first to feel my wrath, he says. And so he closes through. And Kitty says, a secret passage. No point in hunting for a latch. I'll merely face through the wall. Colossus, follow me. And Wolverine says, Petey, hold up. What in blazes is going on? Why did you and Kitty swipe the blackbird? And look at him. Be gone, Wolverine. Katya has summoned me. I must go to her. And if you try to stop me, X-Man, you'll regret it. So he <laughs> just slaps Wolverine. And, um... Uh, rips the door out. Colossus, wait, don't go in there. The passage might be booby trap, but he still goes through. Zoom! And that thing lands on him. At that fall, stay clear, everyone. I'll pulverize that slab. And the poor Nightcrawler can't look. It must weigh tons. Could even Peter survive such an impact? I guess so, Nightcrawler. He's gone. And so, they grab Storm here. How did you find me? She asks. When Kitty swiped the Blackbird, she set off the alarms. The jet's automatic tracer beacon allowed us to follow you to England. On arrival, we heard about the break-in at the Pendro Castle. That became our next stop. Wolverine's enhanced senses and tracking abilities did the rest. Kurt, get ordered to safety. Wolverine and I, she calls him Wolvie. I don't never think Cyclops would do that. I'm team leader Cyclops. My place is here. Don't be ridiculous. You're in no shape for a fight. Suppose Dracula were to regain uh, control of you. And you can see she gets her uh, uniform back on. I know the risk. 
But if I am to be true to myself as Ororo and Storm, I must stay. Win or lose, I must at least try. All right, says Cyclops. Uh, something else, though. I believe Kitty and Peter are under another's influence. Sounds logical, the way they've been acting. Nasty weather outside all of a sudden. You're doing, darling? Asks Wolverine. In part, I fear so, Wolverine. A reflection of my mood. Shall I banish it? And uh, Cyclops says, save your strength. We'll need it. The passage is open, Cyclops. But there are, there may be more booby traps. Forget uh, forget about that, Nightcrawler. We'll make our own way into the catacombs. So you can see him using his optic blast here. And so, nice vertical panel there. And so they go back down. Um, she's using her powers to uh, slow them down. And I love Wolverine just kind of... Eh. And... Uh, Wolverine says, this way, troops, I got a scent. Love the, um, she discovered the book, but it was also, um, hard for her to get in there. She leaked this location and knew that Dracula would summon Storm to get it. She possessed Kitty to uh, gain entrance to the castle, but also bring the X-Men into the battle. She also brought in Colossus because um, she knew Colossus would do everything that she wanted. She was going to do the same to the X-Men. And so she continues that the X-Men's will were too strong. She could just never make keep control and so she's returning kitty to them unharmed and because nightcrawler uh intervened her soul is also unharmed so she says her work is done and they shall not meet again and she says tell storm that with dracula's death his hold on them um is truly ended and they won't rise um after death as a vampire and she says pity and then as a kind of bonus, she also says Colossus is also good and says, it's been fun. <laughs> and so Kitty kind of gets up and it's like, oh, um, she says, guys, what's going on? I was in my room. Oh, Ororo, I said the most awful things to you all. I'm so sorry. And Storm says, it's all right, kitten. Everything's all right now. And a little bit later, Wolverine's kind of just looking out. And he says, how's the kid? And Storm says, confused, tired. She remembers nothing since her tantrum the other day. Good. That's it, then. It's over. And Storm says, is it? And we get the end with a question mark. So, all right, guys. I know this was a little bit long, but this was a pretty full issue. So, on Kenny X-Men, annual number six, Chris Claremont... Bill Sienkiewicz, and Bob Wyatt. Check. Like and subscribe. I do thank you for listening. Goodbye.